Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Plugin here and we're going to start a new series and I hope you all will enjoy it. We are going to be playing Kara no Shoujo. It is a uh, visual novel and for those of you who don't know what a visual novel is, just Google it. But I'll basically be reading the chat and we'll be progressing to the story. But what is the story you might be asking yourself? Well, it is, uh, uh, as far as I can tell, it's a supernatural type murder mystery thing. Yeah. But I uh, bought it some time ago, and I'd really like to play it. And I've already kind of played, uh, let me see how long I've played into it. Uh, I don't know if that's the time I played into it, but whatever. And now, I played a good couple hours into it. Uh, I was doing a live stream when I first opened the live stream stuff up to test it out and whatever. But we're going to start from the beginning because I lost that footage. <clears throat> so yeah. Should prove interesting, at the very least. After being awakened by his phone just before dawn, and picked up by a Topio police car, Ozumi finally arrives at the Fuchu Tama Cemetery. By the way, this this is going to be hell on my pronunciation. I just want y'all to know that, because I'm not very good with Japanese yet. We can work on it, though. The cemetery is surrounded in deep fog. Dead branches snap underfoot as he makes his way inward. This is it. A group of officers are assembled there. Thanks for coming out here. Sure. What's the situation? He addresses the officer who had been saluting him. Who had saluted him. Sir! Last night, a local resident noticed a fire in the area. He came to investigate and found this. Alright. Where's the corpse? Too many of these disturbance, disturbing cases have cropped up lately. It's too much for him to handle on his own. And he still hasn't found any leads on the dismemberment case from the other day. Should I bring him in on this? A certain detective comes to mind, one who's always sticking his nose into cases like this. Tokisaka Raiji. This case is right up his alley. The Egg of Ninus, Part 2. In exchange for a small black egg, she received a torso, right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg. However, she still lacked a head. She surveyed her surroundings, but could not glimpse anyone else. Ah, this won't do. What am I to do? I can't complete mother with this, she fretted. No matter whose head she obtained, it would not have her mother's face. Oh, mother, where could your face be? She asked this of a large black egg. However, it did not answer. Oh, mother, my mother inside of here. Could your face be within this shell? With that in mind, she could no longer wait. She put the large black egg on the ground and raised a large black stone aloft with both her hands. Halt! Thou must not break the shell! The words of her mother inside the egg did not reach the girl's ears. She swung the black rock downward. Crash! A clear sound rang out. Cracks appeared in the large black egg, scattering bits of shell. Mother, where are you? Whilst chipping away at the cracked shell, the girl peered inside. There was nothing but a thick, red fluid. Where is my mother? She thrust her hands into the red fluid and stirred it around, but her fingers did not grasp her mother's head. With the red fluid inside the black egg leaked out through the cracks in its shell. In an instant, 
the ground was stained red. Ah, mother is spilling out. In a panic, the girl got down on her hands and knees, but most of the red fluid had already been absorbed by the earth beneath her. No, no, mother! With large teardrops spilling from her face, she cried out for her mother. But her mother would not come back. The girl cried until all the tears left in her body had been cried out. In time, she stood up. She had no more tears left to cry. All that was left was the headless body of her mother and the shell of a broken black egg. I've got to look for my mother. After murmuring that, she dug in the ground that had been stained red by what was formerly her mother, then buried both the large black eggshell and her mother's headless body. Her work done, the girl set out once more to find her mother. That's fucked up. Damn. The Two Sen Copper Coin. 1956, March 3rd. Right now, I, Raiji, am at my office in Shinjuku. I'm writing up a case summary while smoking and taking the occasional swig of Suntory whiskey. It was a simple case. A wealthy man was killed, his son was arrested, However, the guy insisted he was innocent. In order to prove it, I had to show that his old man had offed himself. And that's all there was to it. After filling in the name of my client, the deceased man's son, I'm done with the paperwork. Whew! I relax, leaning back in my chair. Stubbing my cigarette out in the ashtray, I pull a fresh one from my case and light it. Don't chain smoke, kids. It's bad for you. You'll die. The smoke drifts towards the ceiling, to be dispersed by the fan. Well, that's one more job out of the way. Ugh. I've got a nice little fee for from this for my client. It looks like I won't have to worry about food for a while. Come to think of it, it feels like I've been working constantly since New Year's. <sighs> A murder over inheritance, a murder over a factory eviction, a murder over a dispute in the red light district. <sighs> this world's just full of murderers, isn't it? <sighs> I exhale a lungful of smoke with the words. It seems we live in a pretty dangerous time. Well, I guess that's thanks to the fact that someone like me can make a living. After all, a detective's work thrives in the misfortune of others. <laughs> I suppose it couldn't hurt to take a break once in a while. Fortunately, I don't have any cases at the moment. Going home and getting some rest sounds good. If that's the plan, then there's no need for me to stay here overnight. I quickly pack up my belongings and go outside. The Tokisaka Detective Agency is located near Shinjuku Station, in a narrow alleyway behind the Isten Department Store. Isten? Isten? Yeah. Okay. The Shinjuku Blue Line District is nearby, so I can't exactly call it a nice area. I stick a brown piece of paper to the door, bearing the words, During my absence, I can be contacted here, followed by my address. This way, there shouldn't be any problems if a client comes by while I'm out. Then again, whether any clients will come all the way to the outskirts of the Shinigami Ward, Sugi Nami Ward, my bad, after seeing the sign is another matter entirely. Burger, burglars probably won't target an empty office. Even if someone does break in, there's no reason for me to go track them down, I think. Looks like I've still got plenty of time. I mutter while glancing at the pocket watch. Normally, I'd take the Saibu line to Kamishakuji 
but today I'm going for a little detour. I head away from Kinoku Yami. Yeah, that word. Towards the Japan National Railway's Shinjuku Station. Although it's gotten considerably warmer, the people on the streets are all wearing coats. I weave my way through the crowd to the ticket counter. After buying a ticket for the show line to Kichijoku. G station. I pass through the gate and board the train. Is using these names necessary? Like, couldn't you just like I don't know, make up stuff? That's not hard. I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, by the time I arrive at Kikikijo, Kichijo, I, I, I don't even know where the fuck to begin here. It's already past eleven. Leaving the station via the north exit, I cut through the shopping district, district, which still retains traces of its black market roots. Before me lies my destination. A simple cafe. Moon World. Their coffee and pastries are delicious. There are lots of cafes near my office in Shinjuku, but I frequently make the trek to this place. One of the reasons is that it's run by an old friend of mine. Sorry, we're closed for the night. Kyoko, it's me. Oh. Tokisaka-kun. I want to leave off the kun and stuff, just so y'all know. Seeing my face, Hazuki Kyoko stops wiping the counter. Can I get a cup of coffee? Making one now will take a bit of time. Is that alright with you? Kyoko gestures toward the empty pot with a hand. If it's going to be a while then, a hot water uh, shochu will be fine. Really? Well then, I suppose I'll have one too. Kyoko turns toward the bottle of shochu off the shelf and takes the bottle of shochu off the shelf. My bad. Is it alright for you to be drinking? Well, we're already closed. Kyoko adds Shochi to a pair of tumblers filled with hot water. Tumblers. The liquids mix inside the glasses. Here you go. Kyoko comes out from behind the counter and takes a glass. She sits on a stool, but instead she starts to sit on a stool, but instead picks up an apron that was hanging off of it. Oh, she must have left this out. She? I ask, reacting to the resigned tone underlying her words. Yeah, I hired her recently. I told you about her before, right? Now that she mentions it, I don't remember whether she's told me or not. She lives here, too. She's in her room. Would you like me to get her? Nah, it's fine. It's pretty late, anyway. I tilt the glass, and the mild shochu slides down my throat. Really? With that, she brings her own glass to her mouth. Woo! That's good. Well, it's certainly not your run-of-the-mill Katsutori. Of course it's not. It's barely barley shochu. It's proper barley shochu. I know, I know. Seeing Kyoko puff out her cheeks in indignation, I try to soothe her. We don't really serve alcohol here. But, I've got a nice selection, all the same. I've noticed. Hey, are you drunk already? You're kidding. I wouldn't get drunk off this much. 
Kyoko glances down her glass as she speaks. There are times when I do want to get drunk, though. <sighs> yeah. I nod in agreement. There are times when nothing else will do. Times when I just want to get drunk and forget about everything. A lot of things have happened to us in the past. Well, I'm very busy right now, so I can't go that far. Kyoko suddenly acts cheerful, as if trying to shake off the memories. That's for the best, really. I didn't come here for a heart-to-heart. -heart. <clears throat> How's work? Everything going well? Ah, yes, I solved the case. So it looks like I'll have a little free time. That's good to hear. If you work too hard, your body will give out, and then it's all over. You don't have to worry about that happening. That won't happen to me. I'd like to believe that. Kyoso, Kyoko's expression turns worried. I guess there's nothing I can do about that. Her husband passed away a while ago. You should really get some rest during your break. Yeah, I know. I drain the remaining shochu from the bottle, bottom of the glass, then stand up. I'm going home and sleeping. What do I owe you? I pull out my wallet as I ask. Today's drink is on the house. I had one too, after all. Don't worry, I just got paid so I can afford it. Maybe I just felt like treating you. Is that so? Well then, I appreciate your generosity. <laughs> Thanks. I'll come again. Good night. Sure. Good night, Tokisaka. Alright, and I think I will end that here. So... Let me know what you guys think. If you want to see more of this, or, well, listen to more of this, I suppose would be a better term. Well, I guess there's some beautiful graphics, or beautiful artwork in the scenery, but yeah. Uh, feel free to leave a like if you want me to do more of this. Uh, of course, leave a comment telling me what you do like about it. If you think my voice is a little bit off, or if you think I should do something different with it, let me know, and I'll try to do my best in the next video. And, of course, if you have not already, subscribe. You know, that helps. I think after this video gets 10 views, I will make another one. So, look forward to that, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Once again, I'm TPS Plagin.